Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and I hope you all had a great week. So in today's video, I'm going to cover top three Excel functions for a financial analyst. So if you aspire to become a financial analyst, then this video is for you. And uh, let me tell you that these Excel functions that I'm going to cover are less commonly used, but they are very useful. So I am going to straight take you through the Excel functions that we are going to use today. So first is the forecast function. Second is the slope function and third is the XIRR and XNPV to forecast function. So let's say uh, you have sales data from 2014 to 2022 and you've been asked to forecast the sales figure for 2023 to 2027. Now what would you do? So the good news is that in Excel there is a statistically sophisticated function which basically regress the time series data in past and on the basis of that, it gives predictable values for the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to straight use that Excel function. So the function is forecast dot linear, which basically do the linear regression analysis on a time series data. The first variable in syntax is X. So X is basically the date and the second syntax is known Y's. So it is implied that if X is date, then the Y should be the sales data. So what I'm going to do is I am going to select the sales from 2014 to 2022 and I'm going to freeze the cells. And, uh, and the next syntax is the known X. So we know that the date is our X. So the known X is from 2014 to 2022 and I'm going to freeze this as well. And I'm going to press enter and all I'm going to do is drag this formula. Now you see on the basis of past regression, it is predicting the value for the future. So this is our first function. Now the second function is the slow function. So I put some data for you so in column B. You have dates in column C. You have prices of Shell PLC, which is a oil company in column D. You have uh, prices of Microsoft. And then in column E, you have prices of Apple. Okay. Now the question is, what is the correlation between the prices of Shell and prices of Microsoft? And the other question is, what is the correlation between Microsoft prices and Apple prices? So now we know that Apple and Microsoft belongs to same industry. So their correlation in terms of movement of prices should be somewhere close and on the other hand since shell is an oil industry and microsoft is an it industry not necessarily that the movement in the prices are correlated right so we are going to do this test using a formula which is called slope okay so i'll type out slope now the syntax is known wise so the prices of shell company for last one year is my y the prices of microsoft for last one year is my X. All right. Okay. Now you can see. So on the basis of this, the correlation between Shell PLC and Microsoft is negligible. It's negative 0.1, which is close to zero. Or you can conclude that there is no correlation between Shell PLC and Microsoft. Now, what about Microsoft and Apple? So if I have to basically drag this formula over here, the correlation between prices of Apple and prices of Microsoft is one. It means if Microsoft is increasing by 1%, then Apple could also increase by 1%. Now where you can use this slope function. So let's say if someone asks you what is the correlation between gold prices and stock market, then what you're going to do is you're going to list out the prices of gold. You're going to list out the prices for uh, stock market. So let's say in case of uh, US, the prices, the daily prices of S&P 500 and the daily prices of gold. And you can use this slow function to evaluate the correlation between the prices of gold and prices. Now the third function is XIRR and XNPV. So first let's take an example. So let's say I'm standing at 31st 12, 2022. It means it is the end of 2022 and I have invested around 10,000 rupees. Okay. And then on this 10,000 investment, I'm expecting some cash flow. So let's say I'll just take a random figure between, let's say, 1,000 and 4,000.
Okay, I'm going to paste this value. So in this example, I have invested 10,000 rupees and for next 10 years, I have received this cash flow. And on the basis of that, I want to know what is the return that I've generated from this 10,000 investment. So all I'm going to do is use the IRR function and just select the values. Okay. So it is going to give me a number. So 16 is the return on my investment. Now you want to know in absolute term, how much money you have made. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this NPV function. This IRR is the return that you have generated and expected rate of return is the return which you have expected when you invested this 10,000 is 12%. So if I have to calculate the NPV, so my rate is 12% and these are the values. And as a side note, if you are aware that IRR is the rate of return that makes the net present value to zero. If I use this 16% over here, it means that your NPV is zero. Now the question is, we are supposed to discuss X IRR and X NPV. Instead, we have used IRR and NPV over here. So I am going to use the same numbers that I've used over here. Okay, so here I'm going to use X IRR. So my values are going to be this and the dates is going to be this range. And if I copy the same format, so I'll just increase this to one decimal so that it is easy for comparison purpose. I'm going to do same over here and here as well. All right. So if you see this 14.6 and 14.6 is matching, I'm going to use X N P V. So our first syntax is the rate, which is 12%. The second syntax is the values, which is this. And then the third syntax is the date is the dates. So this is the value. Now this is the case. It will always give the different value even if you are using the same numbers. In the case of IRR, the numbers is same because the period is same. But what if, let's say if I have to change the period. So I'll just simply copy this. Okay. And uh, let's say instead of 31st 12, 2023, I'll change this to first over here as well I'll do the same I'll just change it to 3 I'll just change this to 7 and so on now if you see the IRR have changed between the IRR function and X IRR function now let's say if I have to copy these dates and paste over here then this 16.4 should become 17.3 but that is not the case. Now let me explain the difference between the X IRR and IRR and X NPV and NPV and which one is better. So as you can see in the formula, I haven't provided the dates to the syntax, but still it is calculating IRR because it is assuming the period is equal. Whereas in the case of X IRR and X NPV, we have provided the dates and on the basis of that dates, it calculates the IRR and NPV. So this function gives more robust value in case if the time period is irregular and it's not equal. So we have finished covering all three functions and I hope you had a great learning session and I see you the next time. Thank you.